Excellency, we want to thank you for the opportunity you've given us this time to actually give us a live interaction and of course help our viewers to know that to know what you've been doing and what you're about to do in 2019 as election is about to come so sir we want to thank you so much and uh, to our viewers out there this is uh talk talk on living tv and of course today i'm honored to have with me the executive governor of Iber state dr okizi victor ibazo governor please can you greet our viewer thank you very much and welcome viewer Governor, without wasting much time, we know you've been very busy today. We want to go straight to the business of the day. Mr. Excellency, I want to start from the health sector because they say that health is wealth. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know where, what condition did you meet the Ibis State Health Sector before you took over government? Well, thank you very much. Um, since the past uh, uh, 10 years, the focus of the federal government has been uh, on primary health care, trying to see if uh, we can run strong on preventive health care, uh, meaning that um, we will try to, as a government, stop as many people as possible from coming to the hospital, which means environmental health, community health, and the uh, <coughs> proliferation of primary health care centers uh, took the center stage. And um, when we took over in 2015, we inherited um, um, almost 800 primary health care centers, um, virtually covering all the electoral wards in Abia. That was the mandate of uh, the um, uh, Millennium Development Goals as at that time. Um, so, but when we took over, we said, well, uh, the thing for us to do now was to bring it to full functionality uh, and, uh, to the status of. Uh, operationalizing the various primary health care centers. Uh, but our strategy changed a little because um, I had an interaction with the ambassador of Cuba, Eli, in the life of this administration. And you know, Cuba has a better life expectancy than even the United States. It is 84, for, 84 years for uh, female and 80 years for male. It means Cubans, on the average, um, uh, you know, go beyond 80 years, or so to speak. So, I asked the ambassador what they were doing differently from what we we're doing here. So, I understood that, uh, apart from the fact that they had a strong community based uh, healthcare delivery facility, they also had another layer, the super tertiary uh, healthcare delivery. So, classically in Nigeria, what you have is the primary, secondary, and the tertiary. Representing the primary health care centers, as I mentioned, we have eight, about 800. The general hospital is located at this uh, castle headquarters, yeah. and then like the uh, Abia State General Hospital, FMC. These are some of the amateur, and that's one of the stationary institutions we have. So um, what we did was to try to make the secondary health care centers a little bit strong, so that they can serve as referral points for the for a cluster of primary health care centers in various communities. Because we noticed that people knew about the presence of the primary health care centers, but they were not patronizing them. Okay. And the reason why they were not patronizing them was that they did not have confidence that their health challenges and issues would be addressed adequately at the various primary health care either because of perceived lack of drugs, equipment, personnel, and all of that. So we decided to create an additional option for those patronizing primary health care centers by making sure that they could be referred to the secondary health care center seamlessly. So today what you see is a management system where the secondary health care centers have become referral points for a cluster of uh, primary health care centers in close proximity to the secondary health care center. And um, again, we collaborated with uh, uh, some donor agencies and we have delivered six container load of various medical consumables and equipment targeted first at the primary health care centers. So we are equipping and retooling the primary health care centers to make them more effective and more efficient. And uh, most importantly with the option that if you take your wife there in the night and the delivery becomes uh, tedious and abnormal, that it is easy to refer you and your spouse to the nearest secondary care center. Um, 
beyond that, we decided also to make sure that the secondary healthcare centers uh, are not the ordinary healthcare centers we see again. We, we spent um, 100 million naira to focus on four uh, secondary healthcare centers. One at Uguala, the other one at uh, Okipe, another one at uh, Obiwe, then the last one at Arochi. Because some secondary healthcare centers also have problems of uh, bringing them to full functionality because the doctors are always there. Electricity is epileptic, security is suspect. So we decided to say, well, for us to say that uh, secondary healthcare center today in Abia State meets our standard, that doctors must be resident there. And for doctors to be there, it must make life policy by, by providing power and uh, security. That is why today, yeah, if you go to the job tools that I mentioned, the one at Obi and Guikwano, Okibe and Arochiku, you see that we have built doctors' quarters. We have provided generators and uh, security. It's only the uh, equal also that we are about fencing now. We still have fencing it through the local government authorities there. And um, um, having said that, on the tertiary um, uh, yes level of healthcare, um, Abia State, through the collaboration of our brothers in the diaspora, uh, especially from Abham, have successfully done 14 kidney transplants. Uh, though it was hosted by FMC, but I dare say that it was an Abia State Government initiative and to encourage those uh, surgeons and experts from the diaspora who have come to do kidney surgeries at transplants at very reduced rates. I think it was uh, 4 million uh, when they started initially and all the 14 cases are successful. Uh, uh, we are trying to build a kidney transplant center at Amacha. And that is what I expect that uh, after 2019, Abians will see an ultra-modern kidney transplant center in Amatra that will reduce the amount of money our people spend going to India and other places for kidney transplant, since most people now come down with one form of kidney problem or the other. But um, our narrative about healthcare is better told when we tell you about our strategy. I've just tried to pick, pick bits and pieces of all the things we have done. You see, my aim is to make sure that the life expectancy in Abia State is higher than the national average. The national average is about 45 years. Okay. And we say that that's not good enough. Not Every Abian should be able to live minimum 60, 65 years for a start. And then we can continue to catch up until we hit the target of Cuba. It is doable and our strategy is simple. On the spectrum of healthcare receivers, you have two vulnerable groups. On my right hand belongs those who are aged 70 years and above and they are at home. Some of them have gone, come down with high blood pressure, some with diabetes, some with all kinds of forms, forms of disease, but they are abandoned at home because their children are in major cities searching for the golden fleece. On the left extreme of vulnerable people is the child and mother because when, a, when a, a, a woman falls on that level, uh, what it means is that uh, the child and the pregnant woman, uh, you know, drifts into a precarious situation. Yeah. Anything could be the outcome. But um, uh, we decided to say, okay, what do we do to protect and hold steady the fate of these vulnerable people? So we developed a community-based healthcare outreach free of charge for the agent, we call it our geriatric outreach, which is being run by Dr. Chuck. Um, it goes from community to community. We trained about 250 geriatric nurses that go from community to, in the comfort of the homes of these old people. We meet them, some uh, of them, all so, we so need to do. Sorry, I'm not to shop. Is this done local government by local government? Oh, yes. Okay, local what government. governments have been covered within the process of this program? Um, I'm sure half of Abia State has been covered. Obingwa, um, Ohafia, Arochiku, Munnochi, Ikuano. Um, I don't have the, the, the data often, but I, I, I keep track of where they are going. And they bring me pictures of the kind of results and prayers we receive uh, from this. I remember a case in particular, an old man who had uh, diabetic saw. By the time they removed his wound, they, 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 what they saw, 
uh, it's better not reported on TV. You know, real maggots were coming from his legs, and they had to dress and treat that wound until they stabilized the man. And then, of course, referred him to the nearest secondary health care center, after which the local uh, primary health care center took over and started taking care. You know, for some of them, just advice on dosage of drugs. You know, for, for, for some of them, even soccer, just uh, diets, you know, because when somebody is um, aging, the person needs to step up on protein intake and all of that. You know, and not the cassava in the morning, smooth gary in the evening kind of thing that our people do often. So, um, we, it's been a wonderful experience and I feel particularly fulfilled and thrilled that God has given me the opportunity and privilege to provide such a service for people who are hated to helpless. Then, if you go in front of the CPS in Omaha, uh, government acquired a building which you see there are Jackson's uh, mother and child hospital. Okay. It's a specialist hospital that will take care of the fate of mother and child, so that all our children from age zero to uh, age five and their mother on no account shall we continue in Abia to register uh, people that die at birth. And uh, going forward in 2019 and beyond, it will become a law here that the governor will seek to know why a child died at birth. Uh, for the purposes of our records and for the purposes of recalibrating our strategies, we must know why a child should die at birth. It will help us reduce, uh, and that is the practice in Cuba too. You know, then um, in between these two, you have healthy people, young people that are very active, 25, 30, 35, 40. Uh, they have their own problems. They are people that come under uh, heart attack, a sudden stroke. The RTA is road traffic accidents. So what do you do to that class of people? We decided to provide the Abia State Health Emergency Service. We started with two ambulances. We have scaled up with three ambulances. And these are real ambulances, not hers. Hers is the one they used to carry cops. Ambulances are supposed to be mobile hospitals. We bought each of those ambulances about 90 million naira. And as I speak today, I am happy to say that even as at this day, at the dial of a, a telephone number, um, we have uh, an ambulance service. We only now try to integrate the fire service and the police, so that at the dial of a number, police, fire service, and ambulance will be heading towards the same direction. This is the standard practice all over the world. So I'm also happy to say that it is being anchored by another uh, diaspora. Uh, Abia Emergency Health Practitioner who has volunteered service, is not being paid to set up the Abia State Emergency uh, Service for us and I'm happy that it's up and running. Then, of course, you know that the Abia State Passengers Integrated Manifest Scheme places ambulances on the highway to pick up accident victims and take them to uh, our trauma center at Umba 100 Timba. So, beneath all of this, we have a backbone and that backbone is ICT driven. And that is the Abia Telehealth Initiative, where at the scratch of a card, you will have access to all the 800 or so private healthcare centers in Abia. In Abia. Okay. You know, and then, but most importantly, that your call will go through a call center in government house here, where we have 16 medical doctors sitting and receiving calls, both in vernacular and English, from Abians from all walks of life, offering medical advice free of charge, and then directing them to where to go to and all of that. This is particularly handy for our students, handy for people who are residing in areas that are far flung and away from uh, uh, you know, the regular hospitals and so on and so forth. And finally on health, I must say that part of what has treated me most today is that I just state teaching hospital, which had become more bond many, many years before now, has come back to life. Uh, no, um, the Abia State, a uh, bad general hospital, I mean. Okay, a bad general hospital, yes. Okay. I, uh, 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 I feel very, very touchy about it because um, uh, some of uh, my mother, you know, had a stint in that place as a staff nurse. And um, Abians in the diaspora met me in a town hall meeting in America and told me that they would sue me to court if I fell to resuscitate our brain back 
about your city. And I'm happy and, and, and proud to say that today, that teacher you want to do is back and strong. And uh, the, the, all the nursing schools in Abia have regained their accreditation. And we, we, are, we are training nurses today in all the nursing schools in Abia today. So we have done quite some uh, good job in health, but we are not there yet. Uh, probably by um, the end of 2019 or so, we'll be able to look at the, uh, from the real of statistics, uh, what our, our life expectancy has become. Uh, thank you very much. All right, sir, but before we move away from the health sector, there has been rumors of strike, open, especially on the tertiary health sector. Um, what is the problem with this sector? Because the, the workers there seem to be, you know, angling for the payment of the salaries or complaining about delayed payment of salaries. So I like, would like to know because our viewers out there, the elections are by the corner and they would also want to know your plans for the salaries of the health workers if re-elected come 2019. Well, there are several classes of health workers. There are health workers in the local governments. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that you know that today, Abia State is one of the few states that have paid December salary. Today is 24th. Yes, I'm aware. Yes. So, um, all those working in the Ministry of Health are not being owed. But the teaching hospital... Yeah, that's where I'm particular is about. A, ...is a tertiary institution. And they charge bills. They bill people. They okay. collect IGR, which they don't account for. And we are saying, you, 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 if you are a parastatal of government and you are collecting money from people, you are charging commercial rates for the services you render. Your management should be prudent enough to be able to come up with an amount of money that when it is subvented, you will be able to pay your salary and also have overhead. The government spends close to 140-150 million every month to on, pay subvention on absolute alone. On absolute loan, 90 million on on uh, Abia Poly, about 170 million on the university. These are government parastatals. But I am particularly happy with the management of the university because even when you are unable to come up, because nobody can determine when uh, federal allocation will come. Yeah. So you can go to Abuja and it is not ready. If there is such delay in Abia State University, they pay themselves and wait until. They get a report from government. Yes. So why wouldn't other parastatals stand up, close multiple accounts, plug loopholes for 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 wastages, and then be able to pay themselves? In doing that, also be careful about how they open their doors to employment, because since they employ without recourse to, to the state government, if they decide to employ geometrically and the revenue grows arithmetically. It means that uh, somebody is not doing the right thing in terms of managing uh, the resources of that institution. However, government is working hard to make sure that that school returns to winning ways again. And how do you do that? We have sent two containers of ultra modern equipment to that school so that the departments of radiography and some other departments will be strong enough. Okay, because these services are strong, they will attract more clients, they will charge more, and they perhaps will get more clients. Okay, sir, did you have uh, numerically those uh, ultra modern equipment that were supplied to the hospital? I know that uh, it was the radiology department, okay. which is for x rays and all kinds of scans, that uh, I'm very, very sure of. Uh, the other ones I, I can't remember of. Okay. All right, so uh, this is still Dr. Of on Living TV, and I still have the honor of hosting the Governor of the State, Dr. Okizi Victor Nipazo. Um, we are going to the education sector, so you know that education is the bedrock of every surviving or uh, economy that's survived. So we're looking at public schools. If you look at it, you see that there's no comparison between the public schools and the private schools. And most of us even go abroad, we can't compare what we get here with, uh, with what we get abroad. So, so what has the administration been doing uh, to actually help give Appians quality education or what are the programs you've outlined so far in your admission or your plans so far, your plans if related to the 19 to actually give Appians or Abia students better education. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
we we education is not cannot be isolated from uh, the entire Malay that has bedeviled this country because of improper funding. In the first place, I agree with you. The United Nations uh, recommendations in terms of minimum amount percentage of the budget that should go to education has ever been met by any government, both at the centre and uh, at the uh, state. Well, having said that, in 2015, we decided to have a policy, a policy shift in terms of education. One, we asked ourselves, what kind of education do we need? Okay. And we said to ourselves, since we are inching towards industrialized society, we must go for technical education, which will ordinarily encourage people to study courses that will expose them to, um, you know, uh, being technically minded in such a way that they can survive, invent, innovate, and create things that will be relevant uh, to society in the 21st century. And then, no school can be graded to be better than the quality of the teacher. What makes a school is not matter and place. The quality of the teacher is important. In fact, that is uh, more or less the software. Yeah. So we 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 decided early because we saw that there was some problem that arose in the in terms of quality of teachers in the education center in Nigeria as a result of a program by the federal government to enable our brothers in the north to catch up. They started uh, a kind of training program for teachers where you will see somebody that is selling at and the person will start one program in an uh, abandoned secondary school. After six weeks or six months, he or she becomes a teacher. I've forgotten what they used to call that uh, teacher, teacher training, whatever they were doing. So, it, 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 something like massification of, or mass production of teachers without thoroughly grooming the teachers. First of all, selecting those who have flair for teaching and then grooming them thoroughly. That program is a 20, that, under that 20 year program. 20 year program, the, 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 the yeah, exactly. So that then diluted the quality of, of uh, teaching and diluted the quality of products. That was when we started noticing pupils who could not write letter in primary six. And then up until secondary school graduates who could not write an application Later. for a job. So what we did was to quietly begin a silent revolution by embracing an Australian NGO to come and reteach our primary school teachers. Because the foundation of education is primary school education. That is minimum. In other places, it is pre-primary. The way we call us. Others across the world today begin to observe children from when they are one year old. You begin to notice uh, the inclinations of that child. So the minimum we can do is to begin at the primary school level to retool and reshape the and, and and then you know make our teachers a little more uh, contemporary in their approach to teaching first of all are they teachers in the first place are they prepared to remain teachers then if so what are the let you know the latest skills in teaching that is obtainable all over the world so we brought in australians we brought in people they came in in their numbers I started retraining. I think as of today we have retrained almost 3,000 teachers across it. And they were on the verge of visiting uh, Australia on an exchange program uh, this year. But uh, lack of funds uh, stopped us from dealing with that. But, but the good news is that we have today established the Teacher Continuing Education Center in Obua area. So that whenever the Australian teachers come, they come to facilitate that training and that intercourse in a location, an ideal classroom. And then our teachers spend a few months with them and then go back to teach others. 
So um, now that we are beginning to retrain our teachers, making them ICT compliant, uh, we, we have started the process of loading our curriculum in tablets. Because my ambition is for my primary training to be that is name and the name of the teacher in a computer and, and log off. Because if you don't prepare children for that level of uh, computer appreciation, then they won't be able to compete. You know, and then uh, um, beyond that, we have done in the last two years 340 classroom blocks. Please, so I'd like to get some, you know, people would like to know the places this things are done so that we actually have facts on ground. I will give you examples of where the, where the modern schools are. Because okay. I have 340 classroom blocks and then four modern schools. The modern school, one is at us. The other one is at Abai, opposite the Anglican Church. Abai. Here, Bishop Carlo is the presiding bishop. You know, we have too many Abai. Well, Abai, there's only one in Abai. Okay, oh, it's Abai. Ochitioma, Ochitioma. actually. Okay. Okay. But it is opposite the uh, Anglican Church. Okay. Near Ejidaka and Tomba. Okay. You, you, before you get to Ejidaka and Tomba, you will see an Abai. Anglican Abai. Church Abai. above the road. Yeah. Yes, there's one uh, uh, in Umwaya North and there's one at Ohafia. I do not know the precise location, location of those ones. Okay. But if you go and see the kind of classroom blocks we are doing, you will know that uh, they look like uh, mansions for kings. Because not, you know, finished with time, those modern schools, when you go there, let me explain to you, tell you what you see. You will see a solar powered laboratory. A solar powered library, you will see teachers' quarters, you will see students' hostel, and you will see adequate number of classroom blocks. Why are they model schools? They are model schools because we want to recreate the old academic environment when some of us went to school, where teacher, students, non tutorial staff were all living within the same environment. In fact, at times, even the priest. So that at no point will anybody abandon the school premises and go away so that others will come and start playing soccer and then turn the place into a launching pad for crime and uh, smoking and uh, all kinds of things. Because that is also part of what has brought down the standard of education, making our schools not attractive for students. Because any student who will come in the morning and before you go to study, you start packing cigarette stump and human waste. It discourages no if 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 you are a father and you bring your child to school in the morning, and just as your boy is coming down from your car, they give him a broom to start to pack pack, pack the excreta of uh, somebody. You will want that child to go back to that school. So we are trying to discourage those adults that go to schools to play soccer and then uh, abuse. The school environment. It is the worst kind of insensitivity to to to, 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 to government. You know, and we we are trying to say that let the teachers live there, let the pupils, let the students, let everybody be in the same environment. We provide electricity, we provide security, so that nobody can come there and say he wants to train or how to play football. Yes, football gives money, but it's not more important than education. No. You know, so. This is what uh, we have tried to do. So now, we are building capacity for our teachers. We are building our modern school blocks. And when a good teacher meets brilliant students in a conducive environment, the outcome is bound to be better. Little wonder today, this is the fourth time this year, Abia has come first to West Africa School Certificate. It is no longer a coincidence. We are unequivocally the champions in Nigeria, whether our detractors want to agree or not. If the, if the first time was a mistake, the second time, the third time, and now the fourth time could, wouldn't, couldn't have been a mistake. So, um, and the Abia State University couldn't have moved from number 90 on the scale of state school to the first 10 today. In Nigeria? In Nigeria, if there was no concerted effort and deliberate, intention to make it so so this government is certainly doing something 
to me. And that I cannot remember uh, the essay competitions and other national examinations that our people and our boys and girls have confessed. Even the Abia Puri that is uh, perpetually on strike, they have always done well. They are about the third best in Nigeria in ICT. Software uh, programming, they are the best. The third best in Nigeria. So we have a lot of things to be proud of in terms of education, but we, we are not there yet. Because not until we establish the Faculty of Engineering uh, of uh, Abia State University, not until uh, courtesy of the foresightedness of Senator T. O. G. not until we are able to turn Abia State Polytechnic to a federal polytechnic so that the middle kind of manpower with, with, with uh, technical inclinations and bias are produced. That is where we will, we will be looked upon and, and, and the one who say that Abia has become uh, a basin or basket or repository of uh, highly skilled and semi-skilled manpower that will drive the industrialization that we crave that is about to come upon us. Okay, so I know one thing is uh, setting up uh, a venture, another thing is monitoring. You know, people who, people, pupils and students who attend public schools tend to go there, some of them go and come back with nothing happening. You know, I see the teachers are not qualified. I know that teachers are in, in public school are even more qualified than those in their private sector. So, so what is your administration doing to actually monitor if those people you have sent to the field to actually feed those children actually doing their work? Um, I'll tell you that what has happened to education is a culmination of um, of um, carelessness on the part of everybody. Carelessness on the part of government, carelessness on the part of the teachers, carelessness on the part of parents, carelessness on the part of the and carelessness on the part of civil servants that are, uh, are supposed to manage the, the teachers. You see, under the guise of unionism, um, um, teachers crave for uh, a lax or relaxed working condition. They want to stroll into the class anytime and stroll out and probably open their boots and sell the wares they bought from Dubai or turn the children into uh, houseboys and housebeds to convert part of the school to their personal farm and all of them to spend hours there with it. Because that's why when they, they don't want the mission schools to return. Because you can't do there that in the presence of a bishop or a Catholic priest or an Anglican priest or a civil diversity pastor who is supposed to watch and superintend over what is up. So in those days, supervision was direct. Because the priest will look out from his window and ask the headmaster of the school why he's coming late. So we had people monitoring all kinds of people. But the Ministry of Education that is at home here is now saddled with the problem of monitoring the school at Okibe. So what it means is that government has to strengthen the monitoring department of the Ministry of Education by providing logistics and also providing the requisite personnel. I do not think that the only problem is about logistics. If somebody is committed and determined to do his work, and if that person understands that, hey, that somebody gave you his child to look after is a sacred assignment. The job of a teacher and those who is supposed to monitor teachers is a sacred, is a divine calling. That somebody has given you a child to mold. And then under your watch, that child becomes a drug addict. Under your watch. Because of your ineptitude and what you are unable to do. I mean, it should touch us. If you don't want to do the job, the best thing to do is, I mean, if your neighbor brings a child and asks you to babysit that he wants to go to the market. And if you know you won't be around to look, at, look after that little child, you tell the neighbor, I will not be able to do it. But if your neighbor takes off and then you take off and the child falls into a pool and dies, it is, it is mother whether it is proven in the court or not, or not. So what I'm trying to bring out of all of this is that those that are working at the monitoring department of the various ministries, including those that license schools, some of them know that some of those private schools that license are not good enough to be poultry farms. 
Yes, they, they go and license them. I, I'm saying that I, as governor, cannot be uh, in all places at the same time. But in the years ahead, the monetary unit of the Ministry of Education has to be very careful about it. Otherwise, these are some of the things you, 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 you outsource to those who are prepared to do it, provided to get the result. And I'm coming gradually. In the past three years, I have not stood up against any private school. Not even one. It is not because I don't know that some of them are not fit and proper to be with reform. But what I'm saying that I have been waiting to show an example of what an ID school should be. And I have four now. I have done my 340 classroom blocks, they should go and see them. But these four border schools, they should all go and see those four border schools and know that that is minimum standard of schools in Abia going forward. And in the years ahead, it will come to a point where if your school is not compliant, then you will know that you, you don't need anybody to come and tell you to close down. Because you know that it will just be there to function. But there's a more dramatic narrative I want to share with you today. Okay. The federal government started the school feeding program in Nigeria. And I'm very, very proud to say today that Abia is the only state in Nigeria that is feeding primary one to six. Because the federal government is interested in feeding primary one to ten. Okay. But we know that in Abia State here, yeah, as in the Ibo, there's no way you can feed primary one to three, and then the other brother in four, five, and six will not eat anything. It will not just go well. So we decided to now fund four, five, and six. And then in doing it, what we have succeeded in doing is to reverse the enrollment from public to private schools back public schools because we inherited 141,000 people or there about pupils in public schools but today there are 611,000 sorry can you repeat that figure please 141,000 to 611,000 pupils between 2015 and 2017 I'm not the, the year or the statistics of 2018 will come out any time now okay. and they will be much more than that and we have employed 5,350 women cool. as food vendors okay. cooking for these children. Okay. So, I am beginning a gradual process of returning our pupils back. So, it is my responsibility to make sure that the quality of education they get is the best and the environment I provide for them is the best. And it is with every sense of responsibility that I accept this duty and I will do it. Uh, you've really tried so much to exhaust um, a uh, section on education, so we'd like to move a little bit further on economic diversification and, of course, boosting of internally generated revenue. Of course, uh, in Nigeria, we are most dependent on oil revenue, which has dragged so many budgetary you know, assignments down. So, so, what have you been doing or what do you plan to do to actually diversify Abia economy with respect to creating more allocation to the state government, irrespective of the federal allocation? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I think that um, in Nigeria today, if there's been any government that has shown um, tenacity, commitment, doggedness in diversifying the economy or the economic base of the state, it is Um I say this with all sense of uh, modesty. Uh, one, you recall that when we came, we began the Medinaba campaign. That Medinaba campaign is not about the people. Uh, it's not about our people. It's not about the geography of an area called Abado. The Medinaba campaign um, is a, um, a tacit acknowledgement of the ingenuity of the average Nigerian youth. And then our way of drawing the attention of uh, the leadership and the elites in, uh, in Nigeria to please focus on the Nigerian youth and what they can produce with their hands. We have continued to promote 
made it about to the point that today Abia is recognized as the SME capital of Nigeria. There is no other state in Nigeria and indeed West Africa that has more people doing all kinds of things with their hands. Here in this case, we are interested in leather, works, shoe, garments, belts, uh, bags and all, you know, and in all of this, the World Bank created us with 250,000 people and the clusters are there in our bar, uh, all parts of our bar, Bakasi, power line, uh, are there, are there, and parts of Ungarut. So, um, we have trained over 30 people in China for capacity building because we want to say to ourselves that we were the first to move our people from the mundane culture of using scissors to cut leather to a point where today they can mount machines and produce 10,000 pairs of shoes in a day, 20,000 pairs of shoes in a day, and become suppliers to Walmart, ShopRite, and other big departmental stores across Africa and the world. And uh, the courage to send 30 people to China to go and learn how to produce shoes in, in an automated way speaks to the fact that we are serious about redefining the economic uh, uh, firmament of our people. Today, through our efforts, power that used to be a limiting factor is almost now taken for granted in parts of our area. Because I'm sure that over two, three thousand, four thousand shops have benefited from rural agency for rural electrification power, which they got from our gas at Owaza here for almost one year without interruption. And the president of this country will be coming to see that project uh, very, very soon. You're also aware that the Abia State has today also, under our watch, become the very first, the very first export processing zone in Alibo. So we are giving the Ibos their first peep into the world. We are giving Nigeria a peep into the world from an Igbo perspective. Abia today is the first export processing zone that Nibo has ever had. It is a clarion call for Nibo to begin to repatriate their wealth and build industries in the new Enyimbe economic city, which is a 9,200 hectare land between Okwa East, West, and Obunabo local governments. So finally, in 2019 and beyond, I expect to see a complete merger and closure of the gap between Aba and Portacourt in terms of the economies of the two major cities in the southeast and south south. And that will be huge. I, I, I am proud to say that I envision a manufacturing hub that will not only be a pride of Nigeria but indeed of, of Africa. 600,000 jobs will happen between now and the next 10 years in that location. And it, I can imagine the impact on the GDP of Ndabia. I'm happy to say today that the GDP of my people in Nabia is higher than the national average. And we'll continue to push it further. We have no business with poverty at all. I'm not going to talk about the economic impact of 4 million tenera species of oil palm, which we lost, which we planted, Lost and we have successfully cultivated them in Abia here. Even if it's only 3 million that survives. That is the greatest number anybody had done since the demise of Femo Abara here in Abia State. I can go on and on and on, but I, I, I see a glorious future. I, 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 our relationship with donor communities has never been as good as this. We are proud recipients of a $100 million facility that will give us 500 kilometers of rural road after 2019. That will give us, imagine if you do 100 kilometers of road in Aba, where will you see sand again? 500 kilometers of rural road, storm water management, erosion, sanitary, uh, sanitation, and then 500 kilometers of road. It's, it's awesome. So, for us, we know that Abia 
is now on a part of sustainable development and is irreversible. Alright, thank you sir. We want to thank you so much for the time you've given us to talk to you and we hope that you will still grant us another time when we request. Thank you very much sir. Thank you. Thank you. Program, talk to from Living TV and you've known our guest today is the Governor of State, Dr. Ovizi Victor Ibarazo. I would say stay tuned to the meeting for more for some other of our programs. Thank you for watching.